Guys, we're back for another dev diary. And this is a pretty spicy one because we've seen a patch now that they've released. And this patch has new features baked within it. So we're getting updates to very old expansions. That's right. Together for Victory is having an update. Sure, it's not massive, but they're tweaking the old focus trees and going back to the old work. Patch 1.12.6, the war effort. So they're moving to a new update schedule where they're having monthly updates with smaller content releases so actual content not just bug fixes and other quality of life improvements for hearts of iron 4 so primarily targeting nations that have older perhaps outdated content today we're launching the first of these updates to the live branch you can find the patch notes unchanged from the previous open beta below we're going to talk about the patch notes and there's some super cool features in there that I can't wait to show you. But let's just talk about the plans for the future. So stick to the end of the video, guys. I'm going to show you some of the new stuff they've added and it's really cool stuff. One of our primary motivations is to work with the Hoifar community in a greater depth for these updates, suggesting that we're always welcome, ideas considered and feedback as always requested. And looking at some strong opinions of how we can improve the game to leave feedback in one of our war effort threads. Many items from the suggestion forums have already been implemented this is a practice we will continue as long as we make it will make practical sense as long as it'll make practical sense our recon vehicles have spotted the way forward we now see the coming two operations but with reconnaissance things can be quite uncertain so we will work hard on confirming these dates to make sure that they are correct being sharing them with all of you so this was operation tungsten patch 1.12.6 which is this one here it shows there's going to be two upcoming patches on the way. Actual content patches. They do not have names. Operation Source. Operation Source to be announced. So they're not revealing any information here. They're keeping this all tightly locked away. So there's two things here that's going to make a big difference. One, we're going to get updates to old expansions. Together for Victory, maybe. Uh, Death or Dishonor potentially maybe some of the more newer expansions as well and with that we're getting small features implemented into the game as well to improve the existing gameplay all free of charge yeah i know you guys hate dlc and here we go free updates to old expansions i guess more incentive to buy those old expansions as well but this does something else that's really really important because they're moving to a monthly release schedule for patches this means exploits will be patched significantly quicker so if i release a video on a specific exploit it's more than likely if you're seeing that video it's already been patched i am so sorry guys but there's nothing i can do about that but to be fair, it's kind of embarrassing for Hoi4 in a way and the devs to see a massive exploit in their game get revealed like a major YouTuber like me. So I completely understand from their perspective. Let's load the game up and just see the potential changes. So before we dive into the patch notes and look at the spicy new changes, I want to talk about a few things that I would really like to see changed. First of all, we were just talking about just a little bit earlier about South Africa. This country has so unbelievably rich history during this era. And I feel like for the most part, it's not really taken advantage of very well with the Hoi 4 national focus together the victory focus path. And I feel like there's some really exciting things that you could do to adjust or tweak this focus tree just to make it a little bit more interesting. Because to be fair, the communist path is incredibly generic, even though it has some cool options like liberating nearby African countries nearby, which I suppose is a nice bit of flavor. But the fascist path, which is kind of like in a weird kind of way, the historical path of Africa, South Africa, is not really tapped into very well. I suppose one of the other issues with South Africa too is you just start off with so many big penalties. You're just not able to do anything at the start of the game. Your kind of hand, hands are tied. It would kind of be nice if there were more options that you could actually work with maybe the germans and get rid of some of these big penalties early game like demanding madagascar and on historical i think like 90 percent of the time they say no which is just really frustrating just really annoying to spend seven days on a focus just for the ai to say no i would also mind if they tweaked a few elements of the spanish focus tree as well there's a severe lack of 35 day focuses and there are some focuses in here that just don't give very good bonuses and it would be rather really cool if there were 35 days so you just can get those of the focus tree a little bit quicker so you could actually be involved in the actual world politics and actually do something but for the most part you spend a good four or five years of the game just doing the civil war fixing your country and before you know it the game's already over and you've not really got that much involved and i suppose finally as well death or dishonor one of my favorite expansions if there's any focus tree that could do with a little bit of love it would be czechoslovakia because this this is probably the most basic paid for 
natural focus in the game. I mean, look at this. Go left. Go right. Democratic Bastion. <laughs> look at this. Check industry. Industrial heartlands. New industrial towns. <laughs> These focuses have so got generic names and generic icons as well. Fortification studies. Sudan early fortifications. Sudan advanced fortifications. Sudan land final fortifications. <laughs> the names have no flavor to them. Don't get me wrong though. This focus tree is actually good when it comes down to the bonuses. One of my biggest complaints is sometimes you gain focuses and they give really crap bonuses like one civilian factory or 5% research speed. And I'm like, I have to wait 70 days for this crap. But at least for the most part, when you get some of these bonuses on the industry, uh, or the uh, recruitable population you get for Czechoslovakia. At least they're good bonuses, I suppose. And also you get the option of fascism to declare wars really early against your neighbors, which is always a fun thing to do. Who doesn't like gobbling up your neighbors in Hoi 4 early game before the World War II kicks off? That's super fun. Why don't I add that more to more focuses? And I suppose for the most part too, whoever designed the Czechoslovakia focus tree, I give you a pat on the back because the bonuses are actually pretty good. Look at this one. Communist with a human face. 3% recruitable population. What's an insane bonus. That's really big. It's nice that the actual bonuses actually feel like they're worth your time. Just for the most part, though, the issue with the Czechoslovakia focus tree is it just lacks a little bit of flavor, that's all. And this is a biggie. Now, this is a really biggie. And I know they're not going to do this in a free patch, but I know you guys are all saying it, and I'm going to say it too. I'm going to join the circle, jerk. Germany needs a rework. Another rework. Rework, rework, Germany, when? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to climb wrong. I, if the PDX people are watching this, they're probably hating me for joining the bandwagon on this one. But for the most part, when we've got complex focus trees like Italy's or Bulgaria's or a lot of other nations in the game, and then we look at the German focus tree and we just see a lack of complexity, uh, it feels like it just needs a little bit more love. Of course, I don't think we're going to get that in a free patch. I think more than likely we'll get that as a part of a DLC. But that's going to be kind of strange in a way because that because this focus tree got reworked. So are you going to need to require two DLCs to rework Germany to get the most latest up-to-date version? Uh, that's going to be a bit of a weird gimmicky mechanic, that. But regardless, I feel like Germany could do with a lot of love. It's a shame that the historical path only really has one option, and it's kind of gobbling up your neighbors, really. It can be kind of interesting to, to try and form a massive alliance of fascism i don't know it's just a suggestion just to play something differently just to have some more flavor for germany because germany at the moment has one mode and it's either monarchy or invade everyone around you where i feel like some nations such as italy romania bulgaria have just maybe uh, a little bit more flavor and more options available okay let's look at the patch notes india now has access to a new focus and a series of lengthy decisions which allow the offset of the agrarian society national focus don't say that paradox don't listen to us okay don't say that because they fucking do they do listen to us everyone moaned that they hated the agrarian society could never be removed everyone hated that okay and it was moaned and complained about since together for victory like five years ago and finally now we have the option if you are the british raj and you manage to break away from britain and become fully independent you have the option now to get rid of agrarian society completely let's do a few little uh cheaterinos and let's just say that we're so involved in the war effort we have the option to fully break away from britain independent india so now you become fully independent and that was an important step by the way because you have to become independent to progress down this path it comes under administrative oversight see that you have to be fully independent india to do that so you get down to clamp down on corruption you need to be colony status to do that. I think you start as a puppet, so you have to get to colony. Then you can do clamp down on corruption. Then you have to become fully independent. Which is the new, these are the new focuses, by the way. These are fresh, brand new ones. Fresh new focuses. And when you are fully independent, you gain the option for the rural industrialization. So we'll just hop into this and see it's on decisions. And here we have this. So they've not made this easy. And I'm glad they've done this as well, because India is meant to be like this kind of nation that's kind of mainly based on countryside and farming and isn't fully industrialized. I mean, hence the reason why it's called agrarian society, I suppose. So what we'd have to do, let's give an example. Let's do for, we'll do this one here. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. <laughs> So what you've got to do is you've got to build the infrastructure up to level five. So you've got to max the infrastructure out. Man, that's insane. Boom, maxed it out. And then you've got to pay 
75 political power, which will reduce your stability by amount. So they're putting up a lot of barriers here to slow you down here, which I like, by the way, because I think it, this shouldn't be an easy thing to do. And it gives you 5% of your recruitable factor back. We get it back immediately. No, we have to wait the full 90 days. Burma's a little bit frustrating. If there's one element I want to complain about, Burma has an event that fires later in the game that just makes it independent and releases it. It doesn't even make it a puppet, which is kind of a little bit annoying for the player. The player doesn't have an option to not release Burma. Like, like you could develop these regions, but it wouldn't make any difference anyway because you, you, you can't uh, say no to the event that it pops up, which is a bit annoying. There's two other focuses too that I didn't talk about, and you have to choose one of the two. Land clearance gives you an extra building slot for rural industrialization. I presume you've got to do this before clicking the decision. I don't think it would work in reverse order. I'm not sure about that one, actually. The other option is workforce integration. And for everyone you've done rural industrialization, you gain 15% local available resources, which is pretty strong, and also local construction speed plus 15 percent i like that they've got the option between these two because you've got the option either do you want to develop what you've already got or do you want to build taller i like there's the option here. it does feel like the right one is stronger than the left one though and this means now that the amount of population india has makes it the second most populous nation in the game potentially because it's already unified it is the biggest population in the game isn't it because it's only when china finally becomes unified it has all its population it can tap into so if you're able to unlock get rid of agrarian society as a unified british raj you have the biggest population in the game no it doesn't look like you can get rid of the final 10 percent kind of annoying of course delhi doesn't delhi doesn't have it i think that might be a bug <laughs> for some reason you can't do it on your capital but you can do it everywhere else which feels a bit weird i guess it's a work in progress i guess we're working on this patch one patch at a time imperial associates now can become spy masses of their faction so these are the puppets of Japan. And I guess they've got some kind of spy, plus one spy bonus maybe. So now they've got the option to actually take advantage of that by becoming the actual spy master. Which is good for multiplayer, I guess. Manchuka focus of that one. Ned grants a free spy agency. If built, the national focus is getting plus one operative slot. Let's have a look. For some reason, it's just showing us stability. I don't know what's going on there. This is a big update. Oh, this is actually quite spicy. This is quite spicy. So now they've added two new decisions. And I kind of feel like it's a bit strange that you don't get to press the button more than once. They're just two buttons to add on to give you war support. Which is the minute there's a big issue with war support because it's kind of harder to get it now. Now they've uh, reworked the war support system. So now when world tension gets to 25%, you've got the option now to spend 75 political power and do radio propaganda, which gains you 5% war support. And get this, everyone can do this. Non-aligned, democratic, communist, fascist, everyone can do it. And also you've got the import allied propaganda films. So you need to be a major power or allied to a major power and needs to be more than 50% world tension. And it gives you the option to gain an extra plus 10 war support. So my guess with this is that there might have been a few nations that didn't have enough war support and they added these just due to two decisions in to give them a little bit of an uplift so they can actually have options to, I guess, mobilize their economy, I suppose. What's kind of strange about these, though, is you can only press them once. You know, like war propaganda or worker conditions, it, it reappears back in every six months to a year, I think. I'm not sure how long it just takes to cool down. But these ones you can only press once and you never press them again. It kind of feels like to me like they've added these in just to fix a problem. One new focus added to Romania Air Section White Squadron is the second focus for your air force for Romania. You need to be at war and you can go for it and it allows you to activate a national spirit of minus 10% experience losses. Experience losses. This is kind of like a kind of a really light field hospital. It's not just for Air Force, though. It kind of implies it's everything, right? Am I misreading that? Maybe I'm misunderstanding it. Air support mission CP cost has been reduced by 75%. <laughs> it's so weird. We've, we're getting whiplash from this. So initially, when air supply was, they made them too strong. You could supply your entire army with air supply. Uh, then they nerfed them to oblivion to the stage where it was just pointless to even do it anymore. And now they've kind of brought it back, I guess, a little bit in the middle now. So now you can actually do air supply missions. The only downside is you need a lot of transport planes, but they've made the CP costs reduce significantly less, 75%. So it actually is viable now, but still the amount of supplies you get from air supply missions is very, very low. It is something to su supplement your army. It's not really something you should rely on too heavily. Truce period after kicking a nation from a faction has increased from 60 days from 30. 
So there was a strategy before that if you took control of a faction, you could start kicking people out and then declare war on them. I feel like now they've nerfed that strategy a little bit. Hungarian support of urban focus now grants one civilian faction in addition to the three building slots. Oh, this was such a bad focus. It just added building slots and it was so bad. There you go. So it adds three building slots to Northern Hungary, but also adds one civilian factory. Ah, uh, that was so frustrating. You'd always avoid that focus. You'd always go down the left path and ignore it. Because what's the point of building slots unless you're already maxed out anyway? And you never are as hungry because your industry is too weak anyway. So that's, that's a good move for PDX there. The Hungarian spirit invite foreign investors grants 10% research points in addition to previous effects. That's good. They buffed it because it was weak before. Hungary now receives two uses of the 25% doctrine reduction from the mobile cause instead of the one. Default occupation law is now military governor instead of civilian oversight. This is a bit of a strange one. So it's almost like they're trying to disincentivize civilian oversight of gaining compliance and put you in the middle by selecting military governor. So the default occupation law now is military governor, which is just a bit, a bit strange, isn't it? So they're basically saying to you now is like you put you in the middle so you can decide to go up higher if you want to. Or you can go lighter if you want to. The player has more of a decision over that. So it's basically putting it back to the player and saying, you choose now. There is an advantage, though, of um, military governor. Military governor is good for manpower. It's the only one that gives extra manpower outside of the compliance bonus. AI is less likely to blow up the Suez Canal without reasons. Yeah, that was so dumb. The only time you'd blow up the Suez Canal is if you were actively retreating from that region. Let's say you were Germany or Italy and you're about to lose the Suez Canal to France or Britain or the United States. That would be a natural reason to blow it up. You do it as you retreat. But every just when when Italy takes it and immediately blows it up, it's like, why? You've got full control of Africa. Why would you blow it up? <laughs> it's stupid. The Soviet NKVD Av advisors are no longer are ob omniscient. Okay, we're using dictionary words here. Enemy spy detection chance reduced from 0.2 base from 5% from base. So if you ever realize, whenever you put spies into the Soviet Union, they would immediately get captured. And everyone would be like, NKVD, so OP. So there was a 5% per chance of getting captured when you were inside of the Soviet Union. And the actual correct amount is 0.2%. Enemy operative detection chance plus 0.1%. So it is still higher for the Soviet Union, guys. It is still higher. However, it's not a ridiculously high amount of 5%. How they got that wrong, I'll never know. But it's been like that for so long, too. And it made it annoying in a way. Because, listen, this is my little mini rant about spy agencies. Spies aren't fun to use, okay? They're not fun. They seriously need to have a look at them and see what's going on with them. Because one of the most frustrating mechanics of spies is when they get captured and you have to constantly just do these annoying clicks to send a spy to save them and that annoying loop of sending spies and then saving them over and over and over again oh it's mind numbing and a lot of the time i just cannot be asked with spies because the repetition is just so frustrating a lot of the time you guys always say to me why don't you build a spy network dave and i'm like i just don't want to deal with the annoying pop-ups of them getting captured it's just not fun okay these are a bunch of nerfs for italy thank goodness so I'm not going to go into depth with them, but all it's doing is it's nerfing some of the bonuses you got for them. Because initially, Italy, when they released them, Italy was super, super strong. The thermojet research has been less powerful and improves jet research tech. That's not the one I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of supremacy of the skies. So if anyone's not in the loop, at the bottom of the Italian focus tree was the option to get a jet fighter super early. Modern jet chassis and also a jet engine super, super early. And the jet plane's still in there. Unless maybe I've clicked through one of these focuses when I've got no checks turned on and I've skipped by one of them that had a requirement like you needed the jet engine or something. Okay, so oh, I hate to say this, but this did need a nerf because it was too strong. However, I'm devastated if they took it out completely. They just need to make this focus take like 100 and 360 days or something. I could make it a ridiculously long focus and make it cost 20% consumer goods when you're researching it or something. So basically, it shuts down your entire economy to focus your economy on researching a jet plane or something. But man, to get this plane, which is Heavy Cannons Mark II, self-sealing, uh, armor plates, a jet engine, and a modern chassis is just brutally broken. And I like you're incentivized to go to the bottom of the focus tree to get a good reward. I love that. It just kind of feels like you get the world for nothing for 70 days. <laughs> the Czech focus of communism with a human face now grants three recruitable population from 2%. What do you know? I was just hovering over that a second ago. 
They actually... Okay. <laughs> okay. The check focus of War College now grants minus 100% field officer promotion penalty. Oh, okay, because that's that's an old mechanic that they've changed. Um, from air to RC grants minus 50% fighter production from 10%. Wow, they buffed the checks. Check focus of equal access guarantee no longer re reduces heavy tank production costs, but reduces light tank production costs by 15% from 5%. So weird, I was talking about the checks a moment ago, and I'm just checked this. Yeah, they go light tank production cost minus 15%, medium tank production cost minus 5%. It always seemed kind of strange to me that it reduced the cost of heavy tanks, but you never really had the industry to support heavy tanks as, as Czechoslovakia. But man, minus 15% light tank production cost is massive. The way I see it now, since the tank designer is light tanks, medium tanks, and heavy tanks aren't really that much different. The only big bonus you get from heavy tanks over light tanks is the more hardness. For the most part, you can make a light tank and put so much armor onto it that it kind of becomes almost like kind of a heavy tank. You know what I mean? Ethiopia costs to invite the executive council reduced to 100 political power from 150. Cost to integrate is now 3% stability from 150. Executive council? I don't even know what that is. Oh, they listened. But one of the big issues with the African Union path of Ethiopia is it costs too much political power to achieve the objectives of unifying Africa. But what they've done now is reduce the cost from a, to 100 political power from 150. Ugh, still a bit high. And the cost to integrate now is 3% stability from 150 political power. Wow, that's such a good change. So instead of using political power as a currency, you used to be... That's really cool. I like that. Oh, wow, that's such a good change. The Indian focus of that one that provides a commander of a level five from three. So they're the basically buffing India, basically. Some of the Indian focuses were really bad, though, like gains two railways for, for a 70-day focus. Like, oh, God. Approximately two million people have been refer returned to Mozambique. What do they mean by that? <laughs> what do they mean by that? population of Mozambique was 500k and now they've made it the correct amount of 2 million. Wow, that's good. Romanian focus invest in the uh, IRA. IRA. A I A R now grants three of their reserve factory types from two. Romanian focus of ground support and air defense now grants times two doctrine since that times two. Air separation now grants two bonuses. So basically loads of buffs for Romania, basically. Romanian focus of armored division now grants two armor units from one. For some reason I said Yugos did I say Yugoslavia when I meant Romania, never mind. War score from taking a province for the first time is increased by 50%. Whoa. So now, if you are the first one to take control of a state, that is a big bonus to how much war contribution you get. Am I understanding that correctly? War score and contribution are the same thing, aren't they? Yeah, I presume so. Garrison manpower loss per resistance attack slightly reduced. Spore Bombay now has minus 50% agility from minus 20. They buffed that. Uh, bomb locks now have minus 20% agility from 15. Ah, so they buffed bomb locks, small bomb bays, and nerfed bomb locks. Interesting. Ah, that's really interesting because you were incentivized to add bomb locks because bomb locks allowed you to do naval strikes where small bomb bays allowed you not to. Servo AI modifiers have been added to protect Czechoslovakia trigger event in Hungarian focus tree. A tooltip is added to indicate when you can do to make it less succeed. Strategic materials module now reduces the production cost of air fryers by 7.5. Whoa, that's a big buff. That's a big buff, 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 buff. So not only does it reduce the aluminium cost by minus two, but it also makes it cost less. That is a massive buff. And as I mentioned to you before, in another video, well, maybe you should check out that video out. Um, making planes more cost effective is massive and making a plane cost less seems to be pretty big. The only downside is you lose six defense for that, which is pretty much what you get from self-sealing fuel tanks. So the trade-off here is if you go for self-sealing, and non-strategic materials, you're making it cost more rubber, but less production cost and less aluminium. You're basically making a rubber plane, plane that consists purely of rubber. Uh, the two emperors now reduces the logistics of by 20%. Yeah, it's really annoying is Manchuko. You start off with like no stability and no war support. You basically got none. Slightly reduced manpower requirements again for lower tier occupation laws. So they've buffed the, the occupation laws after they nerfed them before. Am I understanding that correctly? Time to peace stackables resource rights plus war operations that only only counts when the war with the receiver rather than when the war with anyone. Okay, this was a common bug. Uh, you'd end the peace conference and you ask for war reps as well as resource rights and then immediately a day later they would immediately end <laughs> because there'd be a war happening somewhere else which is really weird. 
USA now has a significant peace cost reduction for puppeting Japan. Oh. Oh, is this to prevent weird borders? So basically, every game now historically will end with USA completely puppet in Japan. And the game is incentivized for that event to actually happen now. And we have lots of changes to AI, UI, and loads and loads of bug fixes. Bomb locks also cost less. Ah, that makes sense why they've nerfed them. Now, so here's just something a little bit extra on the end. It says Operation Source. Oh, an Operation Capital. Oh, interesting. I, didn't, I thought they had the same name. I got really confused then. And this guy in the comments suggests that Operation Source was a series of attacks to neutralize the heavy German ships based in northern Norway using X-class midget submarines. Interesting. I don't know how that fits into a patch, though. Operation Tungsten, Does, there's not really anything in here to suggest what Tungsten means. So I don't know, I even know how you read into any of these. I, I'll be real with you. From, from the history of Paradox releasing patches and code names for DLCs, there doesn't seem to be any kind of pattern to the naming schemes and to what gets included in those expansions. I could be wrong. Maybe some of the earlier ones they did. But usually they've um, tried their absolute best to distract us from what it actually will be about. I don't know. We'll see. So... Thought we're going to get some exciting free patches for Hearts of Wine 4 coming up. I'm really excited to see what the new features are going to add in future. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and I'll let you guys know about the new updates that are coming. Now, click this video. This one. No, actually, just this one. It's just this one. Click it. Click it.